In this video, we're going to start by creating a default app using the Vue CLI. We're then going to upload those files into S3 and configure it for static website hosting. And we're going to wrap up by distributing our app out to CloudFront CDN, AWS's content distribution network, which is going to help our app load faster to users all around the world. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create a new Vue app. Let's open the terminal by using the command control backtick. I'm just going to open a terminal down below. Uh, let's issue the command Vue create my app and hit enter. Vue is going to prompt us with a couple of different options here with how we can create this app. Uh, for sake of simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and select the first one, uh, default view 2 with Babylon ES Lint. This will take a few minutes while your app is being generated, so hang tight. We'll be right back. Okay, now that our app is finished being generated, let's uh, follow the commands on screen. We're going to cd to my app, which is the folder in which our app has been created at, and we're going to run npm run sir to build the app and view it in the browser. You can see we're given a address of localhost colon 8080. I'm going to control and click on that to open this in Chrome. Okay, and we're presented with the default welcome to your Vue.js app page that comes preloaded with all Vue apps. So that means our app is indeed working properly. Let's go ahead and close this out. Let's go ahead and control C on the terminal to stop the app from running. And then I'm going to issue the command npm run build. And before I hit enter, I'm going to expand the folder on the left hand side. And when I hit enter, you'll notice a new folder is going to be generated by this build command. We now have a new folder added into our project DIST, which contains the artifacts for our main app that we're going to deploy out to AWS. Now inside of AWS, we're going to use a service called S3, which is used for storing files. But S3 can also be used for hosting static websites, which our view app is. So the quickest way to access this is in the search, type in S3 and then simply select S3 under services. You'll be presented with a screen like this. And before we can start storing our files, we'll have to create what's called a bucket in S3. That's kind of the root uh, entity in which you can store files. So go ahead and click create bucket. Now under bucket name, we need to provide our bucket with a globally unique name, which means that no other AWS account can share this name. Um, for this project, we're going to name this uh, B Morrison hyphen view app. And I'll add one, two, three at the end of that, just to make sure that we're keeping this unique. Although I doubt anybody has the name, uh, scroll down. Since this is going to be a public website, we do want to uncheck this box. This is block all public access and then acknowledge the fact that we're turning off blocking for public access. And now we can scroll all the way down to the bottom and click create bucket. Once you get a message that says the bucket was successfully created on the top, you can actually click on the name of the bucket to go into it. Now we're at the point where we can upload our files into S3. Back in VS Code, let's right click on that dist folder and reveal in File Explorer. We're going to have to go into the folder itself. And these are all the files that we actually want to upload into AWS. So I'm going to minimize VS Code. Now that I have all of these files selected, just simply drag them into the browser window. Once you drop the files, you're going to start seeing a listing of the files that we're going to upload. Uh, we're going to accept most of the default options here. However, under additional upload options, let's scroll down a little bit until we get to the access control list portion. In the second section where it says everyone public access, we want to make sure we check the read on there because this is going to be a public website. We also want to make sure we check this box that uh, tells AWS we understand the effects of changes. And finally, we can scroll all the way down to the bottom and click the upload button. OK, now our files have been uploaded successfully. We can go ahead and click exit to back up into the bucket itself. Now, there's one more step we have to do here before we can actually access our website. Head on over into the property section and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a section here that says static website hosting, and this is what we need to configure. Go ahead and click on edit, enable it. And the only other setting we need to do here is in the index document, we need to type in index.html since that's the name of the HTML page that the view CLI has created for us. Scroll down a little bit more and click on save changes. Now, if we scroll down again into that same section, we're going to actually have a web address here that we can use to access our view app. So let's go ahead and click that to open it in a new tab. And we could see our view app is successfully now being hosted up in AWS. Now we're going to configure CloudFront CDN to distribute our app. A CDN or content distribution network distributes our app to various edge nodes all around the world, increasing access speed by users regardless of where they are. To access CloudFront from the AWS Management Console, uh, select the search box on the top and start typing in CloudFront and select it under services when you see it. Now, if you don't have an existing CloudFront distribution, you're going to be presented with a page like this. Go ahead and click on create distribution to get started. Now, at the time of the recording of this video, there are no additional types of distributions you can create, but you are presented with the web distribution type. Just go ahead and click get started one more time under that. 
Under origin domain name, this is where you normally would have to enter in a URL where your site is or application is normally being hosted. Uh, but CloudFront integrates with S3 quite nicely. It'll actually list out your S3 buckets here. So let's go ahead and click on our S3 bucket that we created in the previous video. And there's only a couple more options we need to configure here. Under viewer protocol policy, we want to select redirect HTTP to HTTPS so we can keep traffic secure. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, we'll see the default root object. In here, we need to type, type index.html. And then finally, all the way on the bottom right, let's click Create Distribution. Now, this process may take a while because your website is basically being pulled into all of the different endpoints that are hosted all over the world through CloudFront. So be patient when this is done. The status here will be deployed, and we'll be back when that happens. Okay, now that our status is deployed, let's go ahead and select the contents of this domain name column here. I'm going to open a new tab and paste the, uh, the domain name in and hit enter. And we can see we're presented with the same page. However, since we're going through CloudFront, we know that we're hitting our website or web app through the CDN and not directly through S3. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share it out to your friends. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. If you're looking for help on an issue or just want to collaborate with other developers, be sure to join my Discord by clicking the fullstack.chat link in the description below or just enter it into your browser to join. Thank you so much and have a great day.